Hey guys, Daniel here. Um, I got a question from a reader the other day that uh, I felt like it would be the easiest to actually answer it in a quick video. So um, Michael writes uh, da -da -da, another question. Is there a Python plugin for Sublime 2 or 3 that shows your syntax completion or errors? And to this, I would say there are actually potentially multiple plugins that you wanna install. They're gonna help you with uh, checking your syntax and they're gonna help you give um, add autocomplete to Sublime Text if you're writing Python, right? So let's talk about the, um, the error checking or the syntax checking first. So what I would recommend here is that you would actually install something that's called a linter or code linter, which uh, is a little program that's gonna check your Python code for errors, common mistakes, uh, syntax errors, misspellings, also stuff like correct formatting. Um, you know, are you using the, the right indentation? Are you using consistent indentation? Um, are your variables named in a certain way that is um, sort of commonly accepted in the Python community. And uh, there's one option, or there's actually two options for the linter itself. And then you wanna pick um, a plugin for Sublime Text that's actually gonna go out and run the linter on your code and then um, parse out the error messages from that linter and display them in line with your code. So let's talk about the actual linters first. There's actually two um, products that are free that I would recommend. Uh, the first one is called Flake 8, which is, um, yeah, it's it's a code linter for Python and it's um, actually a combination of two tools that are called Flake uh, or Py, PyFlakes, I believe, and uh, Pep8, which is sort of a formatting checker. So just use Flake 8. It, it's probably gonna do 95% of what you want and you don't have to spend a lot of time tweaking it and setting it up. So I highly recommend Flake 8. Um, the other option for a linter is, uh, is called PyLinter or uh, PyLint, sorry, PyLint. Um, it's a really great tool. It's a pretty comprehensive solution. So you might wanna spend some time to actually tweak it to, uh, to make sure it, it suits your needs. So it's generally easier to start using um, Flake 8 uh, rather than starting out using PyLinter right away. And I've, you know, these days I'm, I'm using uh, Flake 8 primarily because I feel like it does pretty much all I need. And um, I just don't wanna bother with uh, setting up PyLint anymore. So once you decided on the actual linter program that you wanna use, the actual code linter, you're gonna want to get your error messages into your sublime text um, editor so that as you're typing out the code or opening a file, it's just gonna call you out on the little mistakes that, you know, that cropped in, uh, crept in or um, just things are going wrong with your code. So there is actually a great plugin that I would recommend. It's called Sublime Linter, which is sort of a umbrella thing that supports various linters uh, through other plugins. Um, so you're only gonna have to deal with Sublime Linter and then you can install plugins for Sublime Linter that are then actually gonna go and like lint your Java code, lint your uh, Python code, lint your Z C code and so on and so on. So um, it's pretty flexible and the best tool that I've found so far. So you wanna get Sublime Linter and the uh, the Flake 8 plugin for Sublime Linter and then also Flake 8. So this is a bit, or it can be a bit challenging, a bit finicky to set up. So I plan to write more on this or maybe actually do sort of a quick video tutorial on how you're gonna set this up, but it's so worth it. Like once you have this set up, um, it's actually awesome. Once it works, it is just really, really great and it's really, uh, made my life as a Python programmer a lot easier. So let's move on to the other part of the question, which was, um, yeah, is there anything that gives you autocomplete or uh, syntax completion? So there, there are options for that, to do that within Sublime Text. However, I'm not a big fan of them. Um, probably one that I could recommend the most. Uh, it's called, I believe it's called Sublime Code Intel. And um, that seemed to be a good choice back in the day when I tried it, but uh, I actually stopped using it altogether. And um, these days I, I just don't 
flat out don't use autocomplete anymore. Um, which, you know, I had discussions about this with coworkers who are generally big fans of PyCharm. And PyCharm is really good at this autocomplete stuff. Uh, it's not perfect. I think with Python in general, you're never going to get to a place where, um, you know, you're going to get Java level autocomplete in your tooling. It's just not going to happen because of the way how the language is structured and how it's so, um, you know, not um, um, because of how typing works in Python, it is really difficult for uh, tools to actually come up with autocompletions that make sense. So one of the things that really um, irritated me was that, um, you know, I would get these inaccurate autocompletions where I felt like I could just do a better job if I wouldn't get distracted by um, these incorrect autocompletes and, and actually just not have them and work without them. And um, many uh, experienced developers that I know, they don't use autocompletes at all, right? So if many of them, I felt like, or many people in the Python community seem to move more towards simpler tooling. Um, and uh, personally, I, I definitely noticed that as well, you know, in my setup where sort of I've reduced the number of plugins that are run in my Sublime Text because I feel like for the tools that I use, I want them to be really good and I want to get a, a lot of value out of them. And I'm not going to use something that is, you know, working only 50% of the time. So your mileage might totally vary with this stuff. I would still, you know, recommend you give it a shot, but, you know, also know that it's totally okay to turn it off and just not bother with it if it becomes a distraction. Um, I've heard good things about Visual Studio Code as well, and it's autocomplete. Um, might want to give that a shot as well. However, if you want to stay within Sublime Text, probably check out Sublime Code Intel and see how that works for you. Um, yeah, that, I think that's all I have to say about this topic. But, um, you know, I love talking about this stuff, so feel free to drop me an email. Um, you're going to be able to find it in the, in the description of that video, and you can just link through to um, or click through to my blog and then just shoot me an email or hit me on Twitter. And um, I'm going to do another video about your question. Cool. Talk to you soon. Bye now.